Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In the previous videos, we have been creating this custom drop down using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So we can select any of these uh, options inside this drop down. Now, in this video, I'll show you how to integrate this custom drop down to the currency converter that we created earlier. So this is the currency converter, and you can go ahead and select any of these currencies from here. And you can go ahead and uh, add an amount, and you'll be able to get the conversion down here and you can also click on this button to swap these two currencies so we're going to integrate this custom drop down to our currency converter so let's get started all right so here is the code for the currency converter so now let's go ahead and copy the things that we need so the first thing we need to do is add a container division and then we need to have this heading and then inside the content we need to have this input and then we need to have these two drop downs so let's go ahead and copy these elements and uh, let's go back to our code and uh, let's go to the html file and uh, i'll just paste it over here and now we need to close these two divisions so let's scroll down and here at the end, let's close the first division and the second division. And the next thing we need to do is we need to add this result. So let's copy this result division from here. And let's paste it over here. So it should be just before these two ending tags. So let's paste it over here. And we can go ahead and remove this test values button. We were using it to test the values in our drop downs. So let's go back to our code and uh, now let's go ahead and copy this swap button over here. So let's copy this. If you go back to this currency converter, we can see that the swap button was on the right side of these two currencies. Now let's go ahead and place it over here, just on the right side of the input field. So for that, I'll go ahead and paste the swap button just after this input. And now we need to have this input field and the swap button one next to the other. So let's add both of these inside a container division and let's give it a class of input amount container. And let's cut this ending tag and let's paste it down here. So now this is how it looks. We have the heading, the input field, the swap button and uh, these two drop downs and the result. All right, now let's go ahead and copy the CSS. So let's go to the styler CSS file and let's copy some of these things from here. So if you go to the current project, here's the CSS. So we have this converter container division as the main container. So let's go ahead and uh, reference that. I'll just copy this style and also the styles for the heading. And let's copy all of this and let's paste it over here. And let's go back to our website and this is how it looks. Let's also add the styles of the swap button. So let's go back to our currency converter code. And uh, here we have the CSS for the swap button. And let's also copy the CSS for the result. So let's copy all of this. And let's paste it over here. Right now we can see the styles of the swap button and the result are displayed over here. Now we need to style this input field. So let's go back to our code. And uh, here we can see for the input we have these styles and uh, if you go back to our current custom drop down here also we are using the input field for this uh, custom drop down so we need to add more specificity to our css selectors so right now it is set to converter container input now we need to set this to converter container input amount container and in that we have the input so let's copy this and we'll just change the selector so I'll just copy all of this code and let's go back and let's paste it over here and uh, instead of converter container input let's type converter container input amount container so let's add it over here and uh, we can just remove the select and here also we have some styles so I'll just copy this and I'll just paste it over here and uh, let's go back to our website and this is how it looks now we want to have this input field and this swap button one next to the other so let's target the input amount container which is the container division 
and let's add a display of flex so i just type converter container input amount container and display of flex and let's set a gap of 8 pixels All right now the next thing we need to do is we need to set the width of these two input fields to 100 percent so let's go back and uh, here for the drop down container i think we had added some styles so here we can see for the drop down container we have set a width of 360 pixels so i'll just go ahead and delete that and now we can see that we have this full width now for the input container we need to have the full width it can take so let's target this input inside the input amount container which is this tag right here and let's set the flex to one and now we can see it takes up the full width it can and let's also bring this to the center so here let's go ahead and type margin and let's set it to 32 pixels top and bottom and auto for left and right now it is in the center now the next thing we need to do is we need to update the javascript before that let's go ahead and fix the problems that we have right now so right now if you click on these input fields the drop down options are not being displayed so let's right click and go to inspect and let's see what's the problem so here we can see on line number 96 it says cannot read properties of null so let's go back and let's go to the javascript file and let's go to the line number 96 and uh, here we have the test button so i'll just go ahead and delete it we don't need it anymore and uh, we will delete this as well right now let's click on this input field and we have these options and let's click on one of these options and uh, the options are being selected correctly right now let's go ahead and integrate the javascript code of the currency converter into this project right here so let's go back and let's go to the currency converter code and uh, let's go to the main.js file now here the first thing we will do is we will copy this convert function from here and uh, let's go back to our project and uh, let's paste the convert function over here right now the next thing we need to do is we need to set up all these variables that we need over here so the first thing we will do is create this exchange rates object so let's create an object over here and uh, let's call it exchange rates and if you go back to our currency converter here we can see that by default it is set to usd1 so let's copy this and i'll just paste it over here and now we need to fill this exchange rates so let's go back so here in the init function we are doing it so here inside this for loop we are adding the exchange rates so let's copy this line of code and let's go back to our project and let's add it over here so here also we have this init function so here we have this init function and here also we have this for loop now with this loop we are creating the options inside our drop down so let's go ahead and paste the line of code over here right now let's go ahead and console.log the exchange rates and let's see whether it is being created correctly so let's go back and let's open the console and uh, here we have this object and that we have all these currencies and their rates so everything is being displayed correctly All right now let's go back and uh, the next thing we need to do is uh, here if you go to the convert function here we have this input value and we need to get the input value from this input field over here so we have this class of input amount so let's go ahead and reference that so right now we don't have the input amount referenced over here so let's type const input amount equals document or query selector converter container input amount right now the next thing we need to do is we need to get the currency value of the from drop down and the to drop down so if you go back to the currency converter project and if you go to the index.html file here we can see that we are creating this select tag and we have this option and we are setting the currency code as the value so we can simply go ahead and get the value from here but now in this custom drop down we are using an input field so here we can see we are using this input tag for the drop down and uh, if you go back to our website and if we go to elements and if we open the input field so let's go over here to content and drop down container input container and here we have this input field and uh, we can see that for the currency code we are creating this data attribute called data selected currency code so we need to access this attribute right here 
So instead of this value, we need to access this data attribute. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll just delete this and let's tap document dot query selector and here let's tap from because we have this ID of from for this drop down and in that we have the currency input. So let's type currency input and then we need to type dot data set dot selected currency code and uh, we will also convert it to lowercase. So let's tap to lowercase and we need to do the same for the two currency value. So I'll just copy this and paste it over here and here let's type two. Right, that's it with all these values we need over here. Right now let's go ahead and call this convert function and I'll just call it in the init function. So here we have the init function and let's scroll down and here just after this add event listener, let's tap convert. And now we don't have the result over here. So let's go to the console and here we have this error. Result is not defined in this line of code 116 and 269. So if you go over here, we are referencing this result, but we haven't created the result constant. So let's create that. Let's tap const result equals and it is inside this converter container and we have this division with the class of result. So let's type document or query selector converter container result. Right now let's go back to our website and now we can see that the currency is converted over here. Right now let's go ahead and add the functionality of the swap button. So when we click on the swap button we need to swap these currencies. So let's go back and let's go to our currency converter project and let's go to the javascript file and uh, first of all let's copy this constant and uh, let's paste it over here. Right now let's go back and let's look for the function. So here we have this event listener for swapping the currency. So let's copy this and uh, I'll just paste it right here. Now here in the original code we just needed to exchange these two values. But now in this custom drop down we also need to swap these flags. So let's do all of that. Now what we will do is we'll just delete all of this code. And uh, let's scroll up and here we can see we have this object and it is for the current values. So we need to add all these from values to these two values and all these two values to the from values. So USD should be added to euros and euros should be added instead of USD. So let's go ahead and swap all these six values. So let's scroll down and first of all let's create some temporary values. So let's tap const temp from currency equals current values dot from currency and let's type const temp from flag equals current values dot from flag. Let's tap const temp from code equals current values from code. Right now let's go ahead and update the from values to the two values. So let's type current values dot from currency equals current values dot to currency and let's do the same for current values dot from flag equals current values dot to flag and let's tap current values dot from code equals current values dot to code and then lastly we need to set the two values to all these temporary values. So let's tap current values dot to currency equals temp from currency. Let's tap current values dot to flag equals temp from flag and current values dot to code equals temp from code. And let's also call this function called update values. So here we have this function called update values and it will update all the values to the current values. So here let's type update values and let's go back and uh, let's click on this swap button and we can see that the currencies are being swapped and we can see that the conversion is also being done. All right now the next thing we need to do is when we click on any of these options we should have the converter run. So for that let's go back and uh, here we can see that we have this division with the class of option. So let's take a look at the event listener of the option. So if you scroll down here we can see we have this create option function and if you scroll down here we are adding the event listener click to the option. So here let's go ahead and call the convert function and now let's go back 
and let's go ahead and change this to something so let's change this to australian dollar and we can see that the conversion is working let's change this to something else so let's select this one right here and now we can see that the conversion is working so let's see whether this is correct so let's go back to the original project and uh, let's type one over here and we need to add australian dollar and turkish lira so let's select these options and here we can see it says 1739 and here also it says 1739 so the conversion is working correctly and with that we have added this custom drop down to our currency converter now here we have a small bug so when we click on this swap button we can see that the currency name is disappearing so let's go back to our code and let's go to the swap function so here we have the swap event listener and here instead of temp from code we need to type temp from currency and now this should work so everything is working all right all right so that's basically it for this video if you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below and if you like this video please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates thanks a lot for watching have a nice day